Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly podcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And tonight we have a special guest, David Mark. Hello. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jesse. All right. Does everybody say hi, Dave? Yes. So uh, this is our first episode where we've had a guest. And so Dave is our honored guest. And we're live. Time. And we're live. Well, kind of live. We're not live streaming. Right. But you and I are in the same room. Yes. Yeah. That's also new. We're yeah, in the same room. Normally, yeah. we're in. The, it's not like there's one room and different backdrops. Yeah. It's usually the magic of Skype yeah. that brings us together. It's awesome. It's a beautiful thing. And here we are. Yes, absolutely. All right. Sweet. So, yes. So we're going to bypass all of our normal features tonight, unless you wanted to talk about. Because I totally didn't look up birthdays. Anymore. Excellent. So as so. everyone knows, the, uh... <laughs> is it your birthday? I have a birthday coming up December twenty fifth. Oh, hey, so hey, our hey. birthday for the week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. It is. Wait, really, you're a Christmas guy. I am a Christmas guy. Oh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, well, here's I, your my, Christmas my, my, and birthday. Yeah, gift. my birthday kind of gets overshadowed by the big day. I guess. Yeah. So. Well, now on December twenty fifth. I'm going to always celebrate Dave's birthday. There we go. Yes, absolutely. So what we're going to do today is we are just going to chat, as we usually do, about guitars and talk about David Mark and uh, his uh, projects, what he has going on, uh, how he approaches guitar. Let's have a conversation about guitar and gear. Sweet. Great. So... Let's um, start before we get too far. If you like what you hear, please tweet us at SST Show. Click like or subscribe, whether you're listening to YouTube or uh, iTunes. And if you are listening to us on iTunes, especially iTunes, please leave us a review. We'd love to hear what you think. You like reviews. We love reviews. So please, please let us know. All right. So, David. Uh, let's let's talk guitar. All right, man. Go ahead. And let's uh, maybe before we get too far into the conversation, go ahead and talk about your most current group and uh, what kind of music you play, that kind of thing. Well, my current group is uh, called Miller and Mark. Uh, it's Cheryl Miller from the Williamsport area. She actually is uh, the lead singer of a local band called Ms. Ida and the Alnitas. And uh, of course, you guys know that I was in a band called Roy G Blues, and we eventually broke up. So I wanted to do some sort of acoustic project, so I asked Cheryl to join me, and just things happened. And uh, we've been playing now for about two years. So, and she's a uh, she's a great singer, and she loves jazz, she loves blues, and of course, you know I do too. Um, what I wanted to do is expand my guitar playing. I, I love acoustic, and I love playing with my fingers. So it's given me the opportunity to you know, open up a couple doors with my playing, yeah. you know, opposed to just sure. playing with a pick. Right. So I'm doing a lot of percussion. I'm doing a lot of f- finger picking and it's fun. Like I said, I just opened up a lot of doors with my playing. So we do a lot of originals, um, do a lot of originals and we do basically all genres, anything from the thirties and forties all the way up until, you know, current time. So Nat King Cole, we're doing Amy Winehouse, we're doing Marvin Gaye, yeah. you know, we're, we're doing Route 66, so we're all over the board, but it's fun. Outstanding. Yeah, if you're in the Williamsport, Pennsylvania area and you have a chance to see these guys play, uh, you should definitely, definitely. check them out. I They're, appreciate yeah, that. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, before we get too long, we'll fire into the show. We should go ahead and give you a chance to plug because... You know, people might not watch us after, you know, five minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's their podcast uh, <laughs> viewership there. Uh, so uh, if you, how can people find you on the web? Well, we're on Facebook. It's just uh, Facebook and then look up Miller Mark. We don't have a website, so uh, Facebook would be our only medium for, you know, social media. So Right. Sure. So look for the link in the show notes. Yes. And uh, not unusual. A lot of groups are going with just social media like Twitter or Facebook because you don't have to manage a website. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, Facebook does it for you. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, band pages on Facebook probably get more hits than the actual website. Yeah, they're so yeah. easy to link to. Exactly. And you can put, uh, you know, video and, and photographs and stuff. and Absolutely. Yeah. Upload yeah, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very little maintenance. Uh, so a lot of times what we do is, in this show is we talk about um, how we practice. Mm-hmm. And uh, so why don't you mind? <laughs> if we practice. If we practice. <laughs> when we practice. And when you do. Uh, yeah. So, you so do. basically take us through a practice routine for you. Sit down, uh, you know, one evening, pick up the guitar. How do you, how do you go about practicing? I'm just going to be completely honest with you. I really 
don't have like a a set practice schedule. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm a couch guitar player. Like right there's my guitar. I'm sitting on the couch, so I'm going to start playing, mm -hmm. and I'm going to start practicing. Unfortunately, it's been my downfall playing all these years. I've never been structured enough to set aside a schedule, you know, to, to, to practice. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking guitar lessons back in the 90s. And, you know, my guitar teacher had said that it's really good to, you know, set aside a good hour or two for practicing, you know, and, and work on, you know, timing and work on your scales. And I never do that. Mm -hmm. And here I've been playing for a long time now and I'm still struggling with it. So... Once in a great while, I'll get the metronome out. It's something that I've struggled with for a long time is timing. And it's very hard to do if you're not structured, if you're not settled with it. Mm -hmm. um, I know for you, Jesse, you you have a great, like, time. <laughs> That's so funny. No, no. You don't watch our show, do you? <laughs> so there was a time in my life that I had a structured thing where I would take a few hours, right. spread out over a day, and get through that stuff. And I'm glad that I did it at that time before the ADD kicked in and I, and I stopped, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, I'm pretty much in the same boat. You know, it's kind of a catches can, you know, mm -hmm. practice thing. Yeah, it's. And yet your timing is good. I mean, when, when we see you, I mean, it's tight and you have a really good right hand. You know, when you're doing the percussive, you know. Thing well, I, I feel that my right hand is a lot stronger than my left hand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, both hands playing guitar they're very important. Right. And one thing that affects me is I do physical labor all day. So when I get home, the last thing that I want to do is, you know, use my hands to play guitar. And I've been doing physical labor for years. I've been playing guitar for years. So here I am 38 years old and I'm still struggling because my hands hurt. And that's probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's probably the reason why I don't practice my skills you know, as much just because it hurts, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know. I'm hoping that it changes in the future. You know, I'm hoping to set aside more practicing time. Yeah. Um, I know that I play better if I practice, you know, just say, for example, the major scales, if I go through all of the major scales, all the positions, uh, and I use a metronome, uh, I, I play better. Mm -hmm. If I go a couple days without playing, I am rusty. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can always I, tell. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can always tell. And last night I played for a couple hours. We actually have a, a show coming up. It's not really a show. We've been invited to play uh, the fourth annual Blues Bash at the Pajama Factory. Mm -hmm. And we're opening wow. up. And I think our time slot is like a half an hour or 45 minutes. So we're going to do probably eight songs. And they're not new songs. We've been playing them for a while now. But... Uh, my guitar is sit for a couple of days. I'm like, man, I got to show, I got to show, I got to practice, you know, and you know, life comes before practicing guitar. Yeah, yep. that's true. You know, and, and work and career. And I, I wish it was the other way around. Yeah. You know, unfortunately I'm in no financial position to, you know, <laughs> practice and, eight hours a day, yeah, practice yeah. eight hours a day right. and, and become a virtuoso. But to, to answer your question, Chris, I, I don't really have a, a schedule or a practice routine. I just pick up the guitar and I start playing. And actually, a lot of my original tunes will just, I'll pick up the guitar and all of a sudden I'll just play a chord. It might be a minor seventh, it might be a major seventh, it might be a 13 chord. And then all of a sudden I'll go to the next chord. I'm like, whoa, that's a riff. A lot of my songs are, are composed out of riffs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... I, I don't know. I kind of like it that way. You know, sure, I'll just sure. pick up the guitar when I sit on the couch and I'm, I'll just start playing. Sure. Uh, I wish I was more, you know, inclined with music theory, but I'm not. I Hopefully That's in the future that, uh, you know, that'll change. So, yeah. You know, you're not alone, though. I mean, like no. a lot of like I've read article after article, like guitar players where they say, um, yeah, I'm, at the end of the tour. I'm at my fastest, most, you know, smoothest playing, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. but not really creatively oriented, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, I'm just, I'm, at that point, they're tired of practice, they're tired of playing, they're, you know, and they let it sit for like a month and don't even touch it. And then that's when the creativity starts because everything's sort of new, not new, but just, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I think maybe that's where some creative juices come from. It's just that not unfamiliarity, but just... It's easier to be spontaneous, you know? Yeah. Well, 
I, like I said, I, I hope to change things in the future. I hope to devote, devote more time to it. Um, and since Roy G blues broke up, I, I don't even play electric anymore. Yeah. So it's all devoted to the acoustic and I love the finger style. And that's actually changed a lot because I never did that before. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm playing entire songs without a pick. Yeah. So it's cool. No, it's excellent. I mean, I think your your the way you practice comes through in the way you play, mm -hmm. uh, because you have a real nice. I'd almost call it relaxed way that you play. I was listening to you play pre show, and you sort of you gravitate into something very naturally. I'm a very rigid practicer. I mean, I have like my schedule, and you know, these days for this scale, this day for arpeggios. You know what's up? And so when I play, it's very mechanical almost, and that's something I need to get over. And, and so I think, you know, the way you practice is, is definitely, you know, the way you play. I don't think there is a right way to practice. Well, for the longest time, I, I got my first guitar at 10 years old. I originally started out on piano and took a couple years of piano lessons. And then I just thought guitar was so much cooler. So I got a guitar and for probably 10 years, I was a campfire guitar player. Mm -hmm. uh, I was more worried about partying and the social scene then, you know, picking up the guitar and practicing it. You know, I'd take some lessons here and there from, you know, different guitar teachers, but I didn't really get serious about the guitar until 2000. So that was what, 17, well, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I just started dissecting scales more. And it's amazing, you know, everybody talks about riffs and everybody talks about licks and how to put them all together. And before I would just do licks and just try to make them fit. Now, mm -hmm. I, I kind of still do that, uh, but there's there's a pattern now. You know, I, I know where to go, at least I think I do. So I'm still playing in the pentatonic shapes. I'm still playing in the major and the minor pentatonics. I would really like to branch off into like different modes, like what you and I had talked about before. Yeah you know, to expand my playing. But, um, you know, I think it's very important to structure yourself in the beginning. You know, you talk about being mechanical. There's nothing wrong with that. I wish I could have done that 20 years ago, you know, with playing because you did it, Yeah. you know, and you know it. I don't know that stuff, you know, the modes and stuff, you know, music theory because you studied it. You know, I, I never did. I just was like, you know, I know how to play G chord and, a, you know, a D or whatever. And I knew a couple licks and, uh, you know, every, oh, Dave, you, you play guitar. And, and that's to the extent of it. Like, I I didn't care enough to structure myself with the playing. Yeah. So now it's different. As I'm getting older, I'm like, wow, you know, doors are opening up with playing. And I... I'm trying to be just a little more structured and more mechanical with, with the playing and the practicing, but it's hard, man. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with the way you're approaching the, you know, the guitar. No, oh, no, I think actually he's really got a good progression going. I mean, from when I first met you, well, you didn't even play guitar. You were right. played harmonica. Right. And, uh, but in the time that you've had to spend, cause it is different, you know, when you're in high school and you have like all day, every day over summers and that sort of thing yes. to practice. And you're bored out of your skull before the days of everything that takes <laughs> your attention today. Right. But it's like, it's a very different thing from now with the job, career, wife, you know, everything else um, to, to find that time. And in the amount of time that you've spent, it's, you've really come a great distance, which is awesome. awesome. I appreciate that. And I'll say that I don't, how, I wonder philosophically how much of this is the grass is greener. You know what I mean? Because like. Like, I hit the major and minor and all the modes and all that stuff way before I, like, the blues stuff. I, I think I learned that when I met you. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I just, that was never part of my thing. So, like, the, the whole standard classic rock sort of, I knew some of the licks that I'd pick up off of records or whatever. But it's like the repertory coming from the, the base of the blues, that was not really part of my whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so now I listen to my own playing and it's kind of like, geez, it sounds like a guy playing scales. You know what I mean? And so it's sort of like I wish there was more of the the other unstructured or whatever bit, yeah. you know? So it's kind of always like, I don't know, you need it all, sort of. You do. And so it's, uh, I don't know, you, you, it's good to have different flavors. Did you take lessons or are you taking lessons? I'm still taking lessons. I've been taking lessons for the last four and a half years. I'm on my, third, I'm on my third instructor 
Not because they get sick of me and kick me out, <laughs> but because they typically move away. So I hope my current instructor doesn't move away, because I don't know what I'll do at this point. But uh, Who are you going to now? Uh, Tim Breon. Oh, okay. Yep. Tim's great. Yep. So hopefully we'll have him on the show uh, in a not-too-distant future. Um, so yeah, and I, I, I expect that I will continue to take lessons for a very long time, um, because part of what lessons do for me is give me structure. I've recently gone from one lesson a week to one lesson every other week. That back, I guess it's not so recent. It's been July. It's been very weird for my playing. Uh, I like the accountability of going to someone who I'm giving money to, to keep me playing every day. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I'm paying for it, then that's one more pressure for me to, yeah. Not, you know, to not stop. That's why people go to the gym. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Uh, so, and I've always been in the mindset, well, if I'm paying for these lessons, I'm going to practice mm -hmm. because then I'm just throwing my money away. Right. Which is like, if I pay for the gym membership, I'm going to the gym. Otherwise yeah. I'm throwing my money away. Uh, so I don't, I don't ever expect for me to stop taking lessons, at least anytime in the near future, just because I like that, that regular contact with someone who knows a lot more than I do mm -hmm. for that feedback. How about you? Are you uh, in lessons regularly or not I at haven't, all? Or? I haven't taken a guitar lesson probably since 1999. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. So, I mean, I've jammed with people. I mean, you and I sure. have jammed and you've shown you me some stuff. You pick stuff up from people. You yeah, know? yeah. You, that's the great thing about guitar. If you jam with friends and they know something that you don't and you yeah. pick it up. And YouTube um, is a wonderful resource. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube is a wonderful resource, but my problem is with, with taking lessons and paying somebody, uh, I would take the lesson and I wouldn't practice the material until the night before. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need both. You know? so, right. then, right. so then I would I would I wouldn't lie to the teacher like you know sure. I did I did this great last night. Right. You know while I was practicing it, and here I am sitting in front of you, and I can't even do it. Right. Uh, Cramming does not work. That would so be. Yeah. I, I did it. I did it for years. And, um, you know, I wish I could go back and do it all over. And there's a lot of things that I could, I wish that I could do, you know, over with, uh, with my playing. Um, but, you know, like I said earlier, life just gets in the way and you, you find like, I, I know that you're into running. You would rather run or work out than play your guitar. Well, practice, practice anyway. Practice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Playing is cool. <laughs> and you're passionate about your profession. Yeah. You know, and your career. And I'm sure that you would pick that over practicing, maybe? Some days. Some days. Yeah. Some days. <laughs> <laughs> the middle of the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so why? Oh. No way. Well, I was going to say, I always thought, like, when I took jazz lessons back in college, like, I got probably the best rock guitar practice the night before a jazz lesson. Mm hmm because that's how, that's how I would like sort of make up for it in my mind. It's like, I'm not working on my, I haven't worked on my lesson, but it's like, okay, I'm going to work really hard at this other thing. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what the psychological aspect of the whole thing was. That's why I can't play jazz. Can I show you guys something real quick? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Well, one thing. I knew he had to get that strap. Yeah, I know. I know it was coming off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing that uh, several guitar uh, teachers taught me over the years that I never conform to was when you're playing like I would I, I have larger hands when I would play I would always wrap my hand like that a Hendrix style yep yeah always I've done it since day one like even when I'm doing my scales I have my thumb up here mm -hmm. all right you're supposed to put the thumb on the, the center back of the back of the right on yeah. the center of the yeah. back of the neck I never do it yeah so if I would have started that years ago who knows how my playing would be. So I'm trying to do that now. Well, but now here's a question though, mm -hmm. because I did learn it that way because I had some classical lessons early in my, you know, history. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I tried to do, um, which then morphed as I like got more into Stevie Ray and, and Hendrix and, you know, it's like, Hey, I can do things that you can't do when you actually do it right. You mm -hmm. know? Um, but wasn't one of your teachers, I don't know if it was the latest one, but didn't somebody say actually shift a little bit? Yeah, so he wanted to break me out. So he started me thumb on the back of the, you know, proper way. And he was, okay, so you want to do more blues and rock. So let's get that thumb up over top of that neck a little bit more. 
and actually I had to break yeah. and the other thing I had to break let me grab the I'm not going to be the only guy on the guitar so yeah the one thing I had to break too was that when I first started I was straight up and down all the way down but I, he had my instructor said no angle that hand a little bit more mm-hmm. oh and, yeah yeah, yeah. And as you're up here and so I first started for a long time da, 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 right up and down and now do this a little bit more and probably our viewers can't see this for those are on video um, but the point is is that yeah I started certain habits under my tutelage of my instructor and they said well you know what let's now break that and sort of start breaking the rules a little bit mm-hmm. um so in some ways you know you started where i you know move towards right you know and again it's there's no right or wrong way i don't think it's well i finger picking you know a mm-hmm. lot of the great finger pickers uh actually set their pinky mm-hmm. on the body of the guitar. That's the yeah. anchor. Yeah. That's the anchor. I can't do it. My pinky floats in the air. But many don't though. Many float. Many like that don't, too. but if you if you see like uh Mark Knopfler, uh oh, yeah. um uh geez, I can't even think of anybody. Chet Atkins, mm-hmm. Tommy Emanuel. Oh yeah. yeah. All those guys, they have that uh finger anchored. Uh the guy who invented the uh not the chicken picking, but the uh, the two finger. The Travis picking. The Travis picking. Yeah. Merle, Merle Travis. Yeah, he always had his finger anchored too. Mm-hmm. So I try to anchor it, and I, I just I can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it just because I'm so conditioned to keeping it up. Now the next thing that I wanted to show you guys is I I had a couple of guitar players tell me that when you're picking or strumming, you want to use your wrist. Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear that? I have heard that yeah. from some. My first jazz guitar play teacher was adamant that it all came from the elbow. Really? Yep. And I've heard that too. Mm-hmm. I don't. I I set my palm yeah. on the bridge. Yep. And I pick it out like that. Yeah. You know, I I I, I can't do it this way. Yep. So what if you know I would have picked I, up the guitar and yeah. started that, or even started with the elbow? But you can what if like all all of the various aspects of playing though. Right. And, um, you know, what's fascinating, I was telling uh, Chris about this last uh, few weeks ago, that Troy Grady guy, uh, Troy Grady, go Google him on <laughs> YouTube. Um, so he has this a high speed camera. He takes a high speed camera and, and watches, you know, analyzes a few of the people, you know, they're picking. And he's taken apart like DVDs and all that kind of instructional things and really highly analyzed. And there are just differences. Right. You know, from even people with similar styles, from like Malmsteen to Vinnie Moore to McAlpine, all those guys who do the same sort of sweet, high-speed thing, mm-hmm. they still all do it sort of differently. And so my question is, is there kind of a right, right, right way, really? Or is it just, well, this has become sort of the standard kind of wisdom that isn't necessarily, you know it's what true. I mean? Could yeah. be we're all You're just different. Right. Right. And so, at, at, and my problem, when I think the way you do, because I, I do that too, it's like, should I deconstruct what I do and rebuild it in a better way so that I can achieve that level. And the two questions that come to my mind is, first, do I have the many, many hours <laughs> that it's going to take at this point in my life to do that? And the second thing is you still have to unlearn, you know, as Yoda would say, everything. Right. And is that even possible? And it would, would it make more sense to just, okay, if I have a thousand hours, you know, to p- practice, would it be better to say, here's the structure I already have. I'm going to polish that to its best ability and maybe there's going to be some things that you won't be able to do at the level you might want to do but there may be others that you can do better with the structure you have right it's really yeah well sort of you know i've been talking i talked about this i think last couple episodes on the show uh i started playing guitar classical style with the guitar Mm -hmm. resting on my left leg um sort of like this and i always thought this was how you played and i never understood why people thought les paul's were uncomfortable right because this is fine Right. Yeah. This, this works just great. And then my most recent instructor said, hey, why don't you try the right leg? It mm-hmm. might look more comfortable. So now I've been playing like this and I've made almost a complete conversion. Yeah. And now I understand why the Strat is so comfortable to play. Sure. And now I also understand why some people complain about the Les Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I still find it comfortable to play, but I definitely feel the difference. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think there's changes. Of course, you know, we could what if. You know, all day, you might find, you know, for example, what if if you started playing guitar with the elbow, you might have found that you just didn't like playing guitar. 
Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. true. You know? <laughs> so, um, why don't we shift gears a little bit? We don't have a whole lot of time left, and I thought maybe we'd um, ask you, who um, do you find to be sort of inspirational when it comes to guitar playing? Who are some of your guitar idols, if you will? Besides Chris. Well, yeah, you know, that's Chris. a given, right? That's a good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I liked all, all, all three of the Kings. Freddie mm -hmm. King, B.B. King, and Albert King. Freddie King... I loved him. BB was awesome. BB was the man. Uh, as for like my guitar heroes, I would have to say Danny Gatton uh, is is one of my favorite guitar players. Uh, one that I tried to emulate would be Mike Bloomfield. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mike Bloomfield. He was the uh, guitar player in uh, the Paul Butterfield Blues Band. Yep. And then he went out and formed, I think it was Electric Flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Electric Flag. Something like that. Right, electric flag. Um, it sounds familiar. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I know the guitar you're talking about, yeah. but yeah. And then he, you know, he was with the uh, Al Cooper and Stephen Stills. I think it was called the Super Sessions back in the '60s. But he was a great guitar player. I just loved his style, and he was his playing, his chops, his licks. They were a little sloppy sometimes, but I loved it. It was just pure, and and I and from the heart. And he didn't have a million different pedals mm -hmm. and. You know, he just would play a tube amp turned up, and that's how he got his crunch. And I loved him. Of course, I loved Hendrix. You know, I liked Clapton. But what I found with those guys is I wanted to find out who their influences were. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got interested in the blues. You know, I would read about Muddy Waters. I would read about um, Mississippi John Hurd. I would read about T Bone Walker was a real big influence on me. Um, and that's how I got into like forties and fifties, you know, early style blues. Um, Robin Ford is another great player. I don't know if you guys yep. mm -hmm. listen to Robin uh, Ford, he, you know, fuses jazz with yeah. blues and he's a great player. He's an awesome saxophonist too. Oh really? really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. yeah. He's, he's phenomenal. <clears throat> yeah, but awesome. yeah, I, I like guitar, like, I like the old guys, I think, better than the new guys. I, I don't really have a current idol or a current uh, sure. someone that I'm really into. Uh, half of my heroes, or actually all of my heroes, are all dead, you know? It's just, <laughs> yeah, Hendrix, he was the man. He was yeah. from a different planet. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But you know, for a while, I got into Stevie Ray, and then I just got bored with him. I, I, it's really easy to do with Stevie. I mean, it's just great guitar player great guitar player from the soul from the heart but i just i just got bored with it and, and that's actually right around that time's when i got into jazz mm -hmm. got into jazz maybe six years ago five years ago and i love it it's just like wow mm -hmm. this is unbelievable and you can fuse both of them together jazz and blues and oh, just yeah. get a total different sound and i and i i love that however i haven't made that transition to start yeah, you know the jazz progressions and right. uh, you know, jazz uh, turnarounds and and jazz voicings and and just there's so much about jazz that you could just be a jazz player and study jazz your whole life. Oh yeah, you oh, know, yeah. I, I know a few chords and I think they're really cool, but I have no clue as to what to do. You know, with with doing leads over some of these chords. Oh yeah, right. In the chord melody, they do it all at once. Yeah. I think, like, the ultimate expression of guitar is pretty much Joe Pass. Oh, he's awesome. You know? <laughs> it's like... There's another guy out there, Barney Kessel, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Barney was awesome. But, yeah, I, how about you, Chris? Who's your biggest influence? Uh, I have to say probably B.B. King. Oh, B.B.'s awesome. I It's kind of cliche because a lot of people say that, but it's just that nice tone from a few notes. I like mm -hmm. that song. Simplicity. I really just sort of gravitate towards that sound. I play all kinds of different stuff, but I really like BB. That's where I got my vibrato from. Was listening to BB. It's perfect. Where else would you yeah, get it from? I mean, true. you know, he's the king of mm -hmm. that for sure. Absolutely. Jesse, we know who you like. <laughs> Yang Lee. <laughs> no, actually, no. I'm not a big. I like Paul Gilbert as far as the post Ingve Shredders yeah. guys because he's got a sense of humor yeah you know and he knows when to rein it in i mean he, he can be a melodic as well you know which a lot of the shredder guys don't but actually i like more of this sort of van halen-esque 
Uh, my favorite is this as a guy from White Lion, Vito Brada. I mean, he only had a couple of albums, but I mean, it was like Van Halen tricks and speed and technique, but cleaner and inventive and melodic. Not that Eddie wasn't, you know, he right. isn't. I mean, he is, um, but I think he is just the pinnacle of that sort of creativity. And, there, there's a guy out there, uh, his name is Jimmy something, I forget his last name, uh, but he's the guitarist for Widespread Panic. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of that band? I haven't. No, yeah. I haven't. Oh man, these guys, are, they're like a jam band and they're phenomenal. And even Dwayne Allman, Dwayne Allman's awesome. Joe Bonamassa is great. Oh you yeah, know, he's very good. All, all those guys, they're, they're great. Um, but this Jimmy, I forget his last name. He he's phenomenal. He kind of reminds me of Trey from Fish. Mm -hmm. You know that style of playing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, you know, of course, I love Jerry Garcia too. You know, he just fused a lot of different modes in playing. He used like mixolydian modes, used Dorian mm -hmm. modes, and pentatonics, and I just loved his playing. I loved the way. Never a fan of his sound. <laughs> See, that's, that's what I love about. Really, him. Yeah, yeah, I okay. love his sound. <laughs> it's like he's doodling, but. He well, well, I don't mean I meant the tone of his guitar. I oh, never got into that. Really? Mike Bloomfield's tone is somewhat similar. Mm -hmm. Different playing styles, but just that clean tone. Yeah. Now, later in years, Jerry started using more effects and everything, but um, now the 80s, Jerry had that auto wah playing. Oh, like yeah. Way, you know, yeah. a lot of his tunes. Were, That's true. Yeah. The whole touch of gray. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. But were you going to say something? Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Now, I. I have a lot of different influences and uh, like if you would ask me who I'm listening to now, like I'm on this classical phase. I, I, I love piano. I love piano jazz and I love classical piano. So like right now in my truck, I have Miles Davis's album kind of blue mm -hmm. and I have, I think like a Chopin CD mm -hmm. and Mississippi John Hurt. So like it's like my playlist right now. So, but next week it might be different. Sure, so. Mozart and Maiden. Yeah. Mozart and Maiden. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's great. That, that could actually maybe be the title of the show. So uh, <laughs> that would be a great. <laughs> that would be a great band. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think it is about time for us to start wrapping up. It's been a pretty quick half hour or so, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, would you like to plug anything? Last opportunity. Uh, well, if you come out to the Pajama Factory in Williamsport on December 30th, Miller and Mark is going to be opening up the show. I think uh, Miss Melanie and the Valley Rats are playing there, and the Nighthawks, and Gabe Stillman is playing there as well, and I'm pretty sure we're opening up. I don't know the exact time yet, but it is December 30th, so it's like the pre-New Year's Eve bash at the Pajama Factory in Williamsport, so... Um, it's on Facebook, so if you get a chance, check it out, and hopefully we see you there. Yeah. For those of you in the Williamsport area, um, you have a chance. It's worth worth the drive, absolutely. Uh, these guys are great. Um, let's see. We might be taking a bit of a hiatus over the holidays. I'll so we should best. probably announce that. <laughs> you know, it's the holiday season right now for those of you that listen and keep up with us. So keep in mind that uh, we might have a delay in our next episode. Uh, but until then, uh, enjoy the holidays and just keep picking and grinning. Thanks. Six Strings and Things, A Guitar Adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this show and all other Jester Cat shows at jestercat.com. You can also email the show at sixstringsandthings at gmail.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can also follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester700, and Chris at CW Colton.